Hello everyone and welcome to Geopolitical Trends. As a geopolitical analyst, I ask, was the UK Defence Minister forced to resign? If so, why? In this video, I'm going to provide you the real reason why he abruptly resigned and how this is going to change now the trajectory of the UK's foreign policy. But before I do this, I'd like to extend my thanks to the channel's members and supporters. And for you, if this is your first time here, please smash that notification button so you will be notified every time I upload a new video. And thank you all for your kind support. Let's dive in into this because it's an interesting development. Only a few days ago, after the British Defense Minister Ben Wallace' dramatic statements about his country's military uh, sort of support and aid to Ukraine, in which he expressed almost, yeah, I get this, guys, gambling with the non-stop requests from the Ukrainian side. So the, min the minister, Ben Wallace, that is, announced he's resigning from his post at the beginning of September. That was like nobody saw this coming because he was just, you know, hoping for some other positions like prime ministership, like becoming the next uh, NATO secretary general. So the British defense minister's remark, Ben Wallace, that is, uh, remarks after the recent NATO summit. You know, that's why it came as a surprise and a shocking. No one was seeing this coming. And when he addressed, especially after the NATO summits, he addressed the Ukrainians in a tone with a lot of criticism, stressing that the West and his country in particular, and I put this in quote, is not an Amazon store, end of quote, and asking Ukrainians to show some gratitude. Wow, what a statement. Basically, despite what you hear about the UK supporting Ukraine and wants to send weapons and all that, he's like saying to Ukrainians, hey, we are not an Amazon store. <laughs> I was like, nobody saw it coming. So these statements did not go unnoticed, of course, within uh, the British halls of power. Yeah, it was a big deal, especially after the prime minister, the current incompetent Prime Minister Richie Sunak distanced himself from uh, 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 the uh, the statements issued by the Defense Minister. So it tells you where the how chaotic uh, uh, the internal politics in Britain is, despite what you read uh, on on the papers or hear in the news that you, uh, UK is united with Europe and NATO and the US about supporting Ukraine and. And it's nonsense. And because here's the thing, a week before the news came out, which was just like a few days ago uh, of the resignation, the Financial Times quoted a source close to the defense minister as saying that, oh no, his withdrawal from politics is, is worthless. Sort of another word is not true. Well, he is resigning. <laughs> Ironically, the British uh, uh, Minister of Defense presented himself to the British people and the world, for that matter, as the biggest supporter of arming Ukraine. This is where the hypocrisy and double standards of not only the UK, but the collective West. And for this, and thanks to his uh, file or this file, he shares rows among the British before the same turned into a nail hammering into the coffin of his political career. No. That, uh, uh, I don't know, was it, was it wise of him to say that statement or was he speaking the truth? So, British Defense Secretary Ben Wallace, that is, he is just FYI, he rose to prominence with the outbreak of the Ukraine war and despite, get this guys, despite major changes in the position of the PMs within the UK, from the clown Bojo, Boris Johnson, to the incompetent 
Liz, Liz Strauss, Liz Truss, I'm sorry, to now the current incompetent Prime Minister Richie Sonak. So, interesting, Ben Wallace, the Secretary of Defense, maintained his position since 2019. So what changed? Hmm. So the British politician was keen to show his unequivocal support for Ukraine and was keen supported of giving, get this, battle tanks to Ukraine. So this is why Britain was the first European uh, country to sort of provide tanks to Ukrainian army. Uh, they provide them, I believe, the Challenger 2 tanks, which is like, uh, you know, those are like an uh, older, older model. And by the way, the minister, the defense minister, Ben Wallace, was the first to defend the decision to train Ukrainian pilot, pilots to equip them with combat aircraft, as well as providing the Ukrainian army with the long range missiles. How, how hypocritical of him to be saying one thing publicly and saying another thing behind closed doors. So all this now made Ben Wallace one of the heaviest political figures in the conservative party, you know. And when the competition for the party's leadership uh, was fierce, most opinion polls, by the way, back then, suggest and gave him the lead in this position, only to announce each time that he refused to run to focus on his work as a defense minister. No, 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 he was buying time, you know. As a matter of fact, he wants to become the prime minister. So for months, Ben Wallace took it upon himself to rally Western support for Ukraine and was expected to continue the same task by preparing the skies to supply Ukraine with fighter jets, which we all know is nothing but a hype. It takes about four to five years to train Ukrainian pilots to fly Western jets, you know, sort of the F-16s or, or the Typhoon, whatever, whatever type of uh, uh, fighter jets we will send them. That ain't gonna happen because they will be crossing the red lines for the Russians. And NATO is not willing to take a risk with that. So, the way you look at it now, you put it under the geopolitical microscope to see the big picture. The, uh, the minister, the defense, the British minister uh, of defense is living in a state of frustration right now after he was sort of self-promoting and self-wishing to assume the position of Secretary General of NATO. That's what he was hoping for, you know. And British Prime Minister Sunak tried to convince the West and the Americans in particular to hand over this position to Ben Wallace. Remember last time I mentioned to you, the Secretary General of NATO is always a European. The commanding officer of NATO is always a four-star US general. So, but apparently uh, the American decision was decisively to extend the current Secretary General Stan uh, Jans Stoltenberg because of his advocacy to fight the Russians and of course, ferment the tensions in Ukraine. You all see what's going on. That's what it is. So this, this decision by Ben Wallace to uh, uh, sort of retire sends us shocking waves because a lot of people were hoping that he will be the front runner for the conservatives. That era is gone. There is no way. And the minister by, them, by himself, uh, Ben Wallace, did not miss the opportunity to announce his resignation without painting a bleak picture of the state of the world in the coming years, as he spoke with certainty, that's the key word, with certainty that Britain will enter into a direct confrontation with the Russians uh, by 2030. And I put this in quote, either through a Cold War or a real, end of quote. But did he realize that it will take only a few seconds for a hypersonic missile to flatten London before British forces react? No. 
And this is where you see the double standards of Western leaders. No exception. All of them. So, so all expectations were that Ben Wallace, the current Secretary of Defense for Britain, might lead the Conservative Party to the general elections that will take place in early 2025. And he might still do that. You never know. But at least he shows now his true colors of how he feels about Ukraine. So forget about all the statements that you hear and because his resignation for the statements he mentioned about, oh, does Ukraine think of Britain as an Amazon store for weapons? You know, that speaks value. So in my opinion, this is how I see it. So what do you think? Was it really worth resigning over or was he forced? to resign for, uh, over that statement. So, so if you like the content of this video, by the way, hit that like button and subscribe to support or to show your support for this channel. I will really appreciate it. As always, guys, remember geopolitics impacts your daily life in more ways than one. Till next time. Bye-bye.